Hello, this is Dr. Mark Hyman. Welcome back to my series of blogs on my new book, The Ultra Mind Solution. The most powerful tool you have to fix your broken brain isn't a drug, it isn't psychotherapy. It's something you use every day. It's your fork and how you use it. You see, food isn't just calories. Food is information. And if you put the right information on your fork, your brain will work properly. If you put the wrong information, your brain won't work. Your brain needs all the raw materials of life, which come from food. So if I had one medicine to pick to go to a deserted island, I could pick anything. I would pick food, because food is the most powerful medicine. Food can heal or food can harm. Now using all our modern medical bells and whistles, we can't seem to cure chronic disease. But we can prevent, treat, reverse, and often cure chronic disease in our broken brains with food. The problem is that we're overfed but undernourished. We're suffering from serious nutritional deficiencies that damage your brain and cloud your thoughts, and they leave you depressed. So I'm going to give you a few top nutrition tips from my book, The Ultra Mind Solution. The first <laughs> reminds me of a story of one of my patients who was a 20-year-old woman who hated seafood and avoided it her whole life. And she suffered from depression and learning disabilities and ADD and obesity and muscle pain and chronic fatigue. And her blood test showed severe omega-3 fat deficiency and an overload of inflammatory omega-6 fats, things like soy oil. So giving her an oil change with high dose of fish oil, EPA and DHA, she actually recovered from her depression, her brain fog, her ADD, her pain disappeared, and as a side effect, she lost 60 pounds. Well, why was she so deficient? Well, for five million years, we evolved in a seafood-rich environment, or we ate wild animals and plants full of omega-3 fats. And now, do you gather wild plants or hunt for your meat? If not, you're likely one of those 99% of Americans in the 21st century who are deficient in the most important ingredient in our bodies for normal cell and brain function, omega-3 fatty acids. But what does it do? Well, 60% of your brain is or should be made up of omega-3 fats. So if someone calls you a fathead, take it as a compliment. You see, the brain is the most complicated organ in the universe. Think of your brain. It's about 3 pounds or 2% of your body weight. It uses 20% of your oxygen and 20% of your calories. It has 100 billion cells, each one with 40,000 connections. So if you don't have omega-3 fats, your brains don't work because your brain is made up of fat. So we all need an oil change because there's been a 100,000% increase, a 100,000% increase in the consumption of processed soy oils and other processed oils in the last 100 years and in our fried foods and processed foods. What does that do to our brain? Well, it causes more depression and more ADD and dementia and more murders. In fact, one study found a 35% reduction in violent crime in prisoners who took omega-3 fats. So how do you know if you're deficient? Well, you can have scaly patches on your skin or hard earwax or cracked or soft brittle nails or maybe you get that chicken skin on the back of your arms so get an oil change eat some wild fish and walnuts and flax seeds and take a toxin free omega-3 fatty acid supplement every single day now here's another nutrition tip many people are suffering from serotonin deficiency it's the feel-good molecule right we're using antidepressants and SSRIs like Prozac and Zoloft um, to actually treat this now if they actually worked, uh, like we see with all those happy people and those TV drug ads, well, then I would use them instead of telling people to change their diet and lifestyle and exercise. But they don't work that well. You see, serotonin deficiency is a sign of deeper imbalances caused by toxins and stress and poor diet and sugar and vitamin deficiencies and even things like food allergies. What was remarkable to me was that in a study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, it was reported that there was selective publication, underreporting, of the studies uh, that showed no outcome benefits from using antidepressants. So what is reported uh, actually as success is only 50% relief of 50% of the symptoms in 50% of the people. That means they work to relieve half the people of half their symptoms half the time. And the majority of people who take these drugs actually have side effects like weight gain and sexual dysfunction. I mean, being fat and asexual, that's enough to make you depressed. One in ten of you out there actually take one. So what's the right treatment? It's not necessarily drugs or psychotherapy. You see, drug companies got it half right. 
Depression is a chemical imbalance, but not in any depressant deficiency. The real question is, why are serotonin levels low in the first place? And that reminds me of a patient of mine whose chemicals were completely out of balance, but he didn't have a drug deficiency. He was on a multi-drug brain cocktail, but was still suffering terribly. And by fixing his body, we fixed his brain. You see, he was a 42-year-old man named Joe, and he thought he was healthy despite being on four different drugs for mood and psychiatric problems. One for depression, one for attention deficit, one because he couldn't remember and concentrate, one for anxiety, one for sleep, and it was one new drug after the other piled on over years. Now, he had all sorts of other, quote, unrelated problems, like asthma and psoriasis and reflux and irritable bowel and post-nasal drip and sores on his tongue and an itchy anal area, and he had 24 extra pounds of belly fat and a low sex drive and sugar cravings and low blood sugar. And he ate the typical American diet, a bagel and coffee for breakfast, maybe a sandwich, chips and coke for lunch, and then he piled on pasta and sweets and carbs at the end of the day, along with two glasses of wine, three cups of coffee, and he had too many diet colas to count every day. And he only slept five or six hours a night. Step by step, we got all of his seven keys to ultra mind and balance. We cleaned up his diet. We got him on whole fresh food and off colas and coffee and wine. We cleaned up his gut, which was very inflamed from yeast and a parasite and food allergies. And we fixed his nutritional deficiencies like B12 and folate and vitamin D and chromium and omega-3 fats, which are all very important for mood and a healthy metabolism. So instead of treating any one disease or problem, I helped him by treating the underlying imbalances in his body and his life. After three months, I saw him again. He'd actually lost 25 pounds. His triglycerides dropped from over 500 to 80. His cholesterol went from 275 to 198. His blood sugar levels, his nutrient levels, and his fatty liver were all normal. But more importantly, how did he feel? Well, he had no more need for reflux meds or inhalers for asthma. All those symptoms were gone. And without my instruction, and despite my advice, he stopped all four of his psychiatric medications because he was sleeping fine. He wasn't anxious or depressed, and he had no more trouble with concentration or attention. You see, he learned that if you change your body, you will change your mind. Not in months or years, but in days or weeks. Now, I want to tell you one last story about a patient named John. He had lifelong depression, and nutrients cured him. He had bipolar disease, and he was on tons of drugs, mood stabilizers, antipsychotics, anti-seizure meds, even stimulants, and even Parkinson's drugs. He couldn't live properly. He couldn't go to work or go out with his wife or make plans. And he had so many other symptoms that were, quote, unrelated, uh, but they were actually very connected to how he felt. And, and many things were out of balance, but the main problem was he had a special problem with B vitamins, particularly B12, folate, and B6, all critical for mood and cognitive function. And, and after taking these high doses of vitamins, he called me back a year later and he said, Doc, for the first time in 30 years, my dark cloud lifted, I can sleep okay, I can exercise, I have my life back. Thank you. What's so remarkable to me is how backward our thinking about depression is. You see, doctors tend to use vitamins only if antidepressants don't work. Maybe they should be prescribing vitamins in the first place and then supplementing with antidepressants only if vitamins and lifestyle changes don't work. Now, I want to remind you that you can get a free sneak preview of my new book, The Ultramind Solution, at www.ultramind.com. In my next blog, I'm going to teach you how to balance your hormones and why hidden hormonal imbalances are often at the root of our problems with memory, mood, and behavior.